Hey there, YouTube friends. Mass Bandit here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I always do appreciate it. And welcome back to Planet Coaster. No, this is not Conifer Slopes, obviously. Uh, don't worry, Conifer Slopes is not dead or anything like that. We'll be doing conifer slopes again at a place where i need to take a little break from it i also want you all to know that i have been working uh, on some planet coaster stuff that's uh for not for myself that's not ready to show off just yet so keep your eyes peeled um uh, for announcements for when that new little part for somebody else becomes available. Cryptic, I know, but I don't really want to say much more than that just yet. So what's going on with this? Well, um, I did not want to start a giant new park because I know that my motivation is fleeting at best. However, uh, I didn't want to start something new. I just had some ideas, and for a long time now I've been thinking about a tiny park, a 50 by 50 park. How much can I cram while still making it look good and feel semi-realistic? You know what I like to do. So I have here a 50 by 50 grid. That is what we have going on, which I have come to realize is about one square city block approximately. So that's kind of a reference of what you can uh, think about as far as size goes. It's not very large at all. So uh, we're gonna see what we can get. And the first thing I wanna do, uh, I went to Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. Uh, it's the beginning of July and uh, they were working on the new dive coaster cliffhanger, which is I guess now open or very, very close to being open, which is cool for all those people, but sad for me because I didn't get to ride it. But whatever, no, not bitter, not bitter. <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to work on a dive coaster, and I figured that would be a good anchor point for this project, just to see how, because those are fairly compact coasters and nothing big, in fact, fairly small. I wanted to keep it tight, keep it small. So let's see if we can't get this project, this new project started with a dive coaster. <laughs> so that was, well, that took no time at all. Thanks, editing. Uh, <laughs> but here we are, we have our little, I don't know, I mean little, we have our little dive coaster here. Uh, it's not very large at all. If I uh, explore here, you will see, oh, it doesn't have the results yet. <laughs> we'll let it go. It's not, I think it's like a 90 something foot drop. It does go just below the terrain, which is pretty cool. We could put a bridge over it. That'll be nice. But um, again, uh, I don't think people watch my planet coastering for my amazing realistic coaster layouts. I think they watch it for the park. Hopefully you're all watching for the how it all gets put together and the vibe and the aesthetic of the entire park project more than the coaster. That being said, I, I did want to at least get a decent uh, shaping. I uh, wanted to, to make sure things looked at least plausible and to me this looks pretty good uh this little uh roll thing that's taken uh, i know at the end of the new dive coaster at fiesta texas there's a 270 degree roll and so that's kind of i think what this is supposed to be here an approximation of that uh, the colors are not going to be blue. Uh, in fact, we're going to, again, borrow from Dr. Diabolical Cliffhanger inspiration, and we're going to color it that color, I think. Also started thinking about where I would want a queue to go, but I realized I have not left myself any room for the transfer track. So you'll also see how close I butted up uh, to the corner here. The goal here is nothing inside the park will cross this um, these lines. The only thing that will cross the lines might be some overhanging foliage. Now for the entrance, there's probably going to be an area outside this 50 by 50, um, but the park itself will be contained to this square. So let's keep chugging along and see if we can't make this feel a little more browned in the space. Actually, as you can see, we've gotten some detail work done here. Uh, the issue I ran into is that I can't get a path. Or I, I think it could go straight across, but it looked re the clearance looked really janky. So I went ahead and have a little raised bridge to go over here. We're going to swing the path around as well, uh, just to kind of make it a little bit better. But you'll see I've got my very Cedar Fair-esque um, railing, um, which, I might, which I'm, I'm going to be swapping out for a different Cedar Fair railing by Hydro. This is not that one. Um, I, the thing about my theme, my theme Maker's Toolkit is that uh, I have never downloaded one 
uh, downloaded a piece for my own projects. I always download them for other projects off the workshop or if I have a guest builder that likes to use Theme Maker's Toolkit. So I don't even know what I have in the Theme Maker's Toolkit. So, <laughs> so I don't know. I, I didn't realize I had a, a, a different options for fences. So we're still tweaking, still learning. Uh, but you can see we got our archer for scale here. We've got our don't die fencing and we're dressing it up very, very simply. It's going to be very uh, minimally themed park again uh, as is my sort of mo uh, very generic uh, in its vibes um, probably more so than any other of my projects just because I just I just kind of want to play as this project is, is is sort of a way for me to just kind of play the game and and do what I enjoy without having to do the parts that I like without necessarily having to worry about all those really nitty picky details so if you're looking for those insane details you, you might not find them here but that being said I do have a basic uh, transfer track idea here uh, again it, it, the idea is there we'll dress it again we'll dress it up when we do the station make it look better um, yeah so you can see the direction we're headed in here I do like the compactness that I can fit the entire queue inside the layout and that'll help me when it comes to making a uh, uh, being able to squeeze as much as possible in the finite uh, space that I have so yeah colors are set these are the dr. dive uh, uh, pretty close to the dr. diabolical cliffhanger dive coaster colors at uh, Fiesta Texas uh, I, I like I'm very pleased with them I think it's a nice color combo I'm gonna try to break out of some of my color tropes uh, for this uh, in this little project so I tend to lean real heavily on teals uh, and oranges they are my favorites <laughs> but you know there are other colors i suppose that exist in the world so anywho we got lots more work to do before we can call this even close to being done so let's let's press on so the station is more or less in wanted it to feel bright and airy and with the uh, extra wide trains that uh, obviously the dive coaster has i wanted it to not feel cramped or crowded so i went with a super duper open idea lots of steel uh with this very basic uh, trellis work here I'm, I'm happy with it though this is the kind of vibe that i'm going for again cedar fair six flags ish basic style over here i like how we've made i've made this even simpler the uh transfer the yeah the transfer track cover is even simpler which i'm a fan of i like that a lot and again just making sure that it feels nice and bright i one of the ways i, I was able to make it feel a little bit more open than i normally do is just by simply making it taller that that really seemed to work very well for me sometimes i have a an issue of making everything too short and squat not everything in theme parks are just tall enough so um, yeah, very happy with this. Uh, excited for how this uh, has come together. Again, solidifying what the idea is going to be. Uh, theme Maker's Toolkit roof pieces here. Uh, beams, uh, hydro beams. So I am trying to use more of the Toolmaker kit. If there's something that I know is in game that will work to serve my purpose, obviously I'm going to go ahead and use that. But. Um, I am not against Theme Maker's Toolkit. I just don't have a firm grasp on what I have in it. <laughs> Obviously, we'll have to do. <clears throat> excuse me. We'll have to do some more station work here. I do not want this to be exposed. We're going to just add some simple clapboard and stuff um, later on down the line. But onward we go. If you've been following my content enough, you know I love me a good pun. So I decided to add a quick service restaurant outside the coaster here. Woo! Call it Freaky Fridays. And it sells fries because of course it does. <laughs> Lovin', I forgot how nice the modern brick in-game wall pieces are. So, leaning heavily on that. Yes, yes, there is teal. I just said, teal and orange, gotta get away from that. And what do I have? Teal and orange, shut up, I know. <laughs> I'm aware, I'm aware, I'm aware, I'm aware. Uh, but again, here now, I've got... I know where our queue is going, and I know where uh, this is gonna go. We're gonna stick a uh, photo... Uh, 
ride photo booth right here using the in-game just a momento uh trying to use again trying to use some in-game stuff when possible a uh, simple little stall here not trying to reinvent anything or do anything crazily over the top just trying to do basic nice stuff so nothing to it just all mostly if not no all in-game pieces use some uh shapes here some art shapes other than that it's all in-game stuff so let's see what else we can do with the in-game pieces go figure so as you can see we have some uh, additions here and you can start to see a better idea of how this whole thing's going to be laid out uh first thing does this support suck yeah do i want to do custom support uh, no not really I don't know, that's pretty ugly though. <laughs> that's pretty ugly though. I'm gonna sit on it. We'll see what happens. That, that's that's not pretty looking. But what is pretty looking is I added, and I know, well, it's not teal, it's green. <laughs> green, pink, and orange. Added one of my favorite flats because of its small footprint. Added ourselves a free flyer here. And I love how it snugs in just enough in here. And then it creates and then this nice area for the queue here. Uh, found uh, found out that I had these lovely things downloaded, these lovely tarps uh, downloaded, so made them all pretty and attached them appropriately. And um, yeah, it's it's coming together. It's, it's at this point now where I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I the motivation. It's it's one of those things like um, uh, chemi like in baseball, they say winning breeds chemistry. You can't have good teams that lose all the time tend not to have good chemistry. It's, it's building, and in Planet Coaster, building creates inspiration for me. When I, when I get on a roll and I like what I'm doing, the inspiration just flows. And that's, that's always fun. I, I like when that happens. Use some TMTK mulch down here to kind of block off this area. So our exit here, we have our kind of, kind of matching colored on-ride photos. So I did just a little bit of dress up. I might throw some pictures in there. Um, added a little you know just just a little bit of, a, of an idea so that so that it's not just the booth uh, added just a little bit extra there threw in an animatronic to be a, a, a you know staff member probably gonna recolor the staff member that'll be that'll work well um, yeah I just it's coming along isn't it I, I hope you're like oh yes uh, I wanted to like, oh yeah that's pretty nice it's pretty good for being so small like that's the idea here Hey, that's pretty good for being so small. It helps that our dive coaster isn't super huge. Like, now we can actually look and see. Uh, what's the max? biggest drop? 92 feet. Two inversions. I'll take that. That's not bad. That's not bad. You'll see we're not very good with... Uh, <laughs> it's not a very exciting coaster. It's because you spend so much time going so slow. And that is kind of how these coasters work, isn't it? I've been on one. The only dive coaster I've been on is Val Raven at Cedar Point. Uh, and there's a lot of slowness. <laughs> it is kind of a one-trick pony, the dive coaster, isn't it? I don't know. I think they're fun. They're, they're good. I love... I, I'm a big fan of B&M. Uh, anyway. Yeah, so... At this point, spawn points here. It's like, well, we gotta start thinking about what our entrance is gonna look like. Uh, that's I wanted to kind of nail that down, because um, that would help me further flesh out the rest of the park. Otherwise, it's gonna get really weird really fast. I think when we're dealing with such a small space, uh, I think you gotta be extra careful about how you handle it. Like this little corner here. Is interesting. I don't know if, what, if anything, we're going to be able to do with that. And I want to have as little wasted space as possible. So I don't know. Let's let's plug on and see what my brain comes up with next. <laughs> and here comes the struggle bus. <laughs> I wanted something modern for our entrance and this the clean lines, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and this isn't this isn't going to cut it. Uh, I plopped it down on a whim on a lark, and I sat with it, and I said, <laughs> I came back, and I was like, yeah, no, this is not going to work for me. Uh, but the idea, it will. We're going to have the tickets and, <clears throat> like, office, park office stuff here, and then we'll have the entrance. That, that, that's, I know that's what I want, 
But I don't want it to look like this because this looks bad. <laughs> I don't like this. I also hate how this is never in the sun. So decorating this with good lighting, building is going with good lighting is going to be really hard. So that's kind of a pain in the rump too. But uh, uh, yeah, here comes the big struggle for the episode. How am I going to get the entrance looking good? Because this isn't it at all. Attempt two. Uh, <laughs> better but still bad uh i looked up so okay so here's the deal uh, i know i knew for a while that i was going to call this brazos something because the brazos river is a river here in texas um so i just wanted to tie it in i like using names uh, local names for for things so brazos and the park is a square so brazos square uh that also then because it's the brazos river uh gave me the logo that we're going to use uh just did a quick google search for wave logo picked one that looked nice and then tried to replicate it quickly with art shapes boy i haven't made a custom sign in a long time i'm a little rusty um but yeah this this is okay the the logo i like we're going to take the words and put them on the logo the building i don't like so what i did is i i googled um beach modern architecture or something like that and this is what it spat out and i tried to replicate it and i didn't it, it's in order to make it look the way it needs to look i would have to spend way more time than i and way more time than i want to spend on it so that being said we're going to scrap this idea uh again and <laughs> go for uh take three um, hopefully in take three, we'll get much, much closer to the final product. And hopefully you can see that we are now much closer. Uh, still work in progress here, but this profile for me works a lot better. So what I ended up doing is Googling um, Texas Hill Country architecture, and it gave me a lot of modern rustic kind of thing which is you know my wheelhouse if i have to say i do love that aesthetic um so yeah i i this is the direction we're gonna head in i love the big steel beam here for extra support i will have to throw another one in the back obviously it's it's not it, it's not gonna fly where i have to make that work a little bit better uh just some really simple window here uh what i mentioned in the last about how i don't want to spend the time the time would be to custom wall everything inset window everything one of the problems with using modern architecture as your influence is so much of modern architecture is glass uh, as so that you can see the interior well I, i'm not going to do that i don't think a theme park first of all i don't think an amusement park would have that kind of thing second of all i'm not going to be doing interiors uh, mostly uh, maybe a couple here and there but for the most part not doing interiors so that that leaves me in a conundrum because the in-game windows do not work for this style there is not one in-game window that i think matches the modern vibe well so what i've done is i've gone ahead and i've used um these half wall like the rough brick these pieces um that people use that i think they're supposed to be used for coaster stations but i just went ahead and i used them and that left me this opening where i could make a custom window and these are actually just in-game windows turned on their side so that's the only one i could find that actually did what i wanted but it took some manipulation to get even close to what I wanted. So yeah, you can see where uh, it's going. And um, so we're gonna doll it all up and make it look a lot more complete. And then I will bring you all back for, I believe the final update for this first episode of Brazos Square Mini Park. All right, welcome to Brazos Square Amusement Park, I suppose. Um, you can see a bunch of work has been done and I am pretty pleased with it. I like, I know there's bollards on the workshop, but I really like using these around the, the art shapes as bollards. I did that in conifer slopes and I, I really like it. So I thought I would do the same here. Uh, are we gonna have a parking lot? No, I don't think so, probably not. But I did throw reshade on so you can get some hashtag fancy graphics, uh, make it look a little fancier, but you'll see. Uh, the addition of this little ticket tickets portion of the building i think really helped even it out um i think that really solidified it as uh, a building that it doesn't look like but so uh yeah we have our little gate here 
for our act wheelchair access, disabled access, uh, stroller access, and also as an exit gate. We have day pass entrance, pass holders entrance. Um, I, I, I thought maybe we might, might make some kiosks um, for like to buy, to purchase online tickets or print online tickets or something like that. So you can avoid the ticket booth altogether because we're sort of, you know, in the modern era. But now you can see with the logo attached there, I actually uh, put it in a, uh, in a different place than I was anticipating. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy with it. I think it looks cute up there. Um, I think it does a good job. And then you've got the dive coaster right peeking up right behind it. I don't know. I think that's pretty nice. Uh, but as you can see, we have some lovely TMTK uh, turnstiles. Forgot the word. We have the gate that will close. And I've got the little grooves down here where the gate would sit. Um, now, see, those are little details I don't mind adding. They're fun to me, uh, so I don't mind adding them. Got our exit on this side, entrance for staff, and then over here we'll probably have some bathrooms and some uh, other guest service type things in this corner here. And then uh, what we're going to have, one of the things I'm really excited about, since this park is um, Brazos uh, Square, named after uh, the Brazos River here in Texas, I thought we need to have a Texas uh, food institution. So we are going to build a Whataburger. Uh, in the next episode as one of our main dining options, which I think is super cute. Um, so yeah, if we just take a stroll, I don't think we've, we haven't walked anything yet. You can, uh, picnic tables were just here for giggles. I'm, that's not a final placement. Obviously we need curbs and pathing, uh, pavement all over the place. Um, but you can see here the interaction. I love how much it interacts with the past. This is something I don't normally do. I don't normally have coaster oh i'm stuck don't normally have coaster interacting with the paths um but i like it for this project a lot so let's let's sneak down here and let's see what, let's see what we can do uh yeah we need to have a sign need a name for this coaster uh i don't have any real strong ideas one way or another so if there's a name that pops out to you and i'm not going to call it cliffhanger i'm not going to steal the name from um Six Flags. I would like a different name. Something generic would be good. Uh, if you can come up with a good coaster name, I might might use it, and uh, then we can make a quick sign for it and get that all done. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see where else. What else would you like to see in this little project? I want to hear from you. What do you think we should put? Small things. I'm thinking a very simple water ride in a corner. I figure the corners will be where our big attractions are. I uh, would love to see. I just went a couple weeks ago to Kima, finally rode the Boardwalk Bullet. It is a very good ride. I was very surprised at how nice I, how much I enjoyed it uh, and how smooth it was. It was really good. Um, but I would love to see a gravity group wooden coaster kind of akin to the boardwalk bullet. That'd be pretty neat. Uh, so we'll see what we can do. A uh, carousel, that kind of stuff. Maybe we ask our friend Redline to help us out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is the first episode of uh, of this new series and I don't I don't know how long or how often it'll be updated but I am excited to play uh, so that's always good it's always nice to say that so hopefully you're excited for some new planet coaster stuff I don't know I just thought I would throw it out there and see what happens if you did like be sure to uh, hit the like button comment about your favorite part or where you'd like to see the project head and um, yeah all that YouTube algorithm stuff super helpful uh, with all that being said, I guess have yourself a great day, great night, great whatever, and I will see all of you for the next episode of Brazos Square in Planet Coaster. Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>